Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew, welcome, glad you're all here. Uh, today I wanted to do a video about the present value of future Songbird cash flows. That's right, I'm nerding out again on some finance stuff, having fun, taking a break from Web3 libraries, taking, away, taking a break from Python, taking a break from Viper, which is cool by the way. Cool, smart contract programming language if you're not into Solidity. And just having fun combining some principles from uh, and some fundamentals from traditional finance and applying them to uh, Songbird and a little bit of decentralized finance, playing around, playing around in Excel, just kind of wondering, you know, hey, does this apply? Do you think this is going to apply to the future? I think it is. I think what I'm about to go over will play out similar to this in the future. And so what do I mean by that? I'm going to use a classic bond analogy where we talk about zero coupon bonds and we talk about coupon bonds and we calculate the present value of that bond. And after we do that real quick overview, which I'm sure some of you are already familiar with if you've, if you've taken any finance classes or you've just learned on your own, which you can definitely do on Udemy. You don't need college for this stuff. You can learn it for free online now. You don't know to, need to spend 60 grand to go to some private school. Unless you need networking to climb the corporate ladder, then it might help. But if you're just learning it to learn it, you can learn all this stuff on your own. And so but after we do that, we will get into, we'll apply that model to like, for example, instead of bonds, why wouldn't these just become NFTs? Why wouldn't startups issue NFTs that have a future value a coupon payment, which is basically payments you'd receive annually or maybe even monthly, and why? And we would want to be able to calculate the present value of that NFT. And the beauty of that is that would all be paid out programmatically instead of managed by a third party, like it currently is in traditional finance. So I think this is all really cool stuff. And let's get into this. I am nerded nerding out today. Hope you're having a great day. Here we go. Let's get started. So uh, many of you have probably seen these. Like I said, these are uh, classic. This is what's called a timeline analysis. And this is for a zero coupon bond. Bond has a uh, what's called principal value or par value or face value. I think it's traditionally $1,000. So and let's say that you are buying a bond and that bond is going to give you a thousand dollars in two years, right? And so you want to know what the present value of that bond is. You're not going to pay a thousand dollars now for a bond that you're going to give you a thousand dollars back in two years, because a thousand dollars in two years, right? Inflation's going to eat into it. It's eight percent right now, or something like that. And you could take that thousand dollars and buy something that's going to go up in value, like. Songbird token. So why would you do that? Why would you buy a bond for $1,000 if you're going to get 1000 in two years with no monthly payments? You wouldn't. But you want a way to calculate the monthly value. I mean, sorry, you want a way to calculate the present value. And there it's a formula for that. It's pretty, pretty easy. It's right here. Hopefully you can see this in the top of my Excel doc. Basically, for a zero coupon bond, the formula is you take the future value right here, and which is $1,000. You divide that by one plus the interest rate, in this case, 4% we're gonna use. And then you, uh, you, uh, you, ex you do an exponent to the power of the number of years right here, which is this D3 right here, number of years two. So basically, uh, to break this down, or to kind of state this without the Excel blocks, you're taking 1,000 divided by one plus 0 0.04 to the power two, right? And so, the, with these with these uh, assumptions, the present value of this bond of a thousand dollars in two years, if you're doing an interest rate of four percent, which sounds ridiculous right now, the value of that bond would be nine hundred and twenty-four dollars. Okay, that's a zero coupon bond. Now let's do one for what's called a coupon bond. Simple as well, uh, not too complicated, and you use the same time not a timeline analysis. The only difference is the bond's still $1,000, just like the zero coupon bond, but the issuer of the bond could be a startup. If it's a corporate bond, right? We're going to be dealing with those in the future. Uh, they're, they're also promising a cash flow, a coupon payment, 
of $100 per year. We're just using these small numbers. When we get to Songbird, we'll use much bigger numbers. It'll be more fun. So we're looking at $1,000 bond, and then we're going to get $100 in year one. We're going to get $100 in year two. We're going to get $100 in year three, plus the $1,000 face value back. And so we want to know the value of that. And it's pretty much the same type of formula, a little bit different, a little more complicated. Excel makes it quite easy, actually. Uh, there, in Python, I actually did this as well. And I don't know if you really want, well, you probably don't want to stare at the code here, so I'll get out of here. But Excel makes this really easy. You don't even have to do this formula. You can just simply um, use what's called a net present value function in Excel, and you put in your assumptions here. So basically, I think the first assumption is your, um, what is it? B, it's your market rate. So the first assumption is the market rate. So with a coupon payment, with a coupon bond, you want to use the market rate and not the coupon rate or your desired interest rate to, to calculate the present value, which is basically what you're getting from the bank if you loan money to them, I think would be about 4%. So yeah, so the 4% actually kind of fits, even though this is probably an old, <laughs> old analysis. Um, and then anyway, you just put in your cash flow one, your cash flow two, and your your par value or your face value principal, it's also called, plus your cash flow three. That gives you a net present value. In this case, uh, $1,166 is what this bond would be worth. So, and you'll get, yeah, uh, over the course of three years, you'll get a total of, what is that, $1,400, and you would pay, in this in this analysis, uh, $1,116. It doesn't sound that spectacular, actually. Okay, let's see if we can apply this to Songbird now. Let's say that we are in a, I don't know, some sort of modern NFT marketplace where it represents bonds, and there's a corporation in there, and they're, say, and they're offering a zero-coupon bond where they're like, okay, so we uh, will give you, us, the investor, the, the corporate entity who's issuing this zero-coupon NFT is saying to us, we will give you, let's say they're offering to give us 100,000 Songbird tokens in, in three years. And so what we're like, we have to think about, okay, so, well, what would that be worth now? What return do we want? We already know with Songbird that we can delegate at this time and get about at least a 20% return annually. So um, probably better, but let's just go ahead and put in 20%. Uh, that would tell us that, okay, so if you're going to give, if this entity is going to return 100,000 song, 100, songbird tokens to me in two years, I would be willing to pay 69,444 songbird tokens for that. Okay, I mean that seems okay, and maybe we want more. Maybe we want. Maybe we might think, well, be between delegating, which I'm getting 20% off, and then I'm getting another, you know, 20, 30% in in uh, decentralized finance protocols, we might be like, yeah, I want 50%, right? I want 50% back. Uh, so in which case, uh, in two years, a hundred. If we're offered by an issuer. 100,000 Songbird tokens in two years, that would be worth 44,000 Songbird today if we are looking for a 50% uh, interest rate annually over two years. And if we stretch it out, let's say the corporation's saying, all right, we'll do it in five years. Maybe we can, uh, we'd have to, <laughs> yeah, 50% annually, uh, probably a little high, but, you know, maybe that would be... Um, crypto is so funny. That'd be 0.10%. So that would be worth 62,000 Songbird. Interesting stuff. Interesting to think about. Okay, now let us go ahead and change these assumptions so it better matches the uh, Flare Network ecosystem and the Songbird tokens. <clears throat> and we will, calculate, uh, we will calculate the present value of this offering. So imagine we are perusing the NFT marketplace of the future where we can find bonds issued by startups or corporations in the form of NFTs. 
And so we're perusing and we come across one issued by a corporation and it says that they will pay us $1 million. I'm sorry, they will pay us 1 million songbird tokens in three years and they will give us an additional 100,000 songbird tokens every year till that three-year maturity date. So basically, what does that look like on the timeline? You're going to change this up here. Basically, we're going to get 100,000 songbird tokens in year one. We're going to get 100,000 songbird tokens in year two. We're going to get 100,000 songbird tokens in three years. On top of that, we're going to get a million additional songbird tokens. <clears throat> so that's going to give us uh, one mil, uh, 100, 200, 300,000 uh, this is going to give us 1,300,000 songbird tokens in three years. And we want to calculate the present value of that. How much would we be willing to pay for that? What's the yield? So to calculate the present value of 1 million songbird tokens in three years plus 100,000 a year for three years, we're going to use a market rate, a market interest rate of 20%. Now, why would we use 20%? Because the market rate is what, is for songbird, is what we can earn just by simply delegating our Songbird tokens to signal providers, to price providers. Because right now I'm earning more than 20%. I'm sure you are too if you're delegating to signal providers. So that's the market rate we can earn just by delegating. So we're going to use that to calculate the present value of this offering. And when we do that, we come out to a present value of... 789,351 Songbird tokens, which gives us a yield of 12.67%. And actually, that's not too bad if you think about it. When I first glanced at that, I thought it wasn't that great. But we're talking about paying 789,351 Songbird tokens now for a million Songbird tokens in three years, plus 100,000 every year, which will give us, by the end of three years, we'll have a total amount of 1,300,000 Songbird tokens that we're paying 789,000 for in Songbird. Now imagine when those Songbirds are worth a dollar. That's going to be nice. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's interesting stuff. What do you think? Do you think this is going to apply? Do you think this will um, actually pan out in terms of the way the future is going to look with, with the issuance of corporate debt? Do, we'll be able to go invest in startups directly like this through marketplaces. I think we will. I think we will. It'd be, it'd be great to build something like this. I know right now there's a project on Flare. Can't think of the name of it. I just did a video on it like probably a month ago where you can go invest your songbird into startup companies. So it'll be interesting because we could use formulas like this to make sure we're actually getting the return we want and if it's worth it. Now, one thing that's going to be interesting in the Flare Network is we're using this market rate to calculate the present value of this offering, which is a million plus 100,000 times three, basically 13 million Songbird tokens. And the present value of that we're using is the market rate because that's what we could get elsewhere. But with the Flare Network, we can get this 20% in addition to this if we're able to not only delegate our Songbird tokens, and use our wrapped Songbird to fund this, to purchase this, this um, corporate NFT bond, if you will. So that's fantastic stuff. All right, everybody, I'm going to wrap this one up. This one's getting long, and i got to get back to uh, cranking out some code. And I hope you're all having an amazing day. None of this is financial advice, of course. I'm not a financial advisor, and I will talk to you all soon. All right, bye.